Today I'm going to install the Speedway Motors both on gasser kit on a 64 Nova. Before we get started, I'd like to say I have no idea what I'm doing, so this is not an instructional video. Before I go ahead and bolt the uh, subframe on, I want to fill this hole right here. I don't know why it's here, but I'm going to just fill it in with some weld and try to smooth it out a little bit. I'm not going to run fender wells, so if I drive it in the rain, all these little holes like this that holds the factory insulation on the firewall, all them little holes are just going to catch water and come inside the car. This one won't it'll actually go into the air box up here, but I'm going to go ahead and fill it. And I found there's a plug right here you could take off, and I just took a piece of copper pipe and flattened the end of it out, and I was able to stick it in there and hold it back there so hopefully that'll help me fill that hole in because I've I've never filled sheet metal holes with the MIG welder in before but how hard can it be right well it's not perfect but it's pretty good it's got these little bee tiny pin holes here I don't know exactly how to fill those in maybe the other side will turn out better than that but I think that'll work a little paint will cover all that up so what I learned on that first one was I turned my welder down to two and the wire speed up to three. And I stick my wire out about that far before I start and it was keeping me from blowing it out as bad. But like I said, I'm still still learning how to do this. This side come out a lot better. Less, less little tiny little pinholes in it. I almost burnt my car up on this one. There's like leaves or something stuck down in the inside that box there. I'm gonna cover this bare steel up with a little bit of paint. Once it dries, we'll start bolting this thing on. Okay, I got me some jack stands set up. I'm gonna grab that subframe, set it down there, and we're gonna find out if this thing truly is a bolt-on subframe. This thing only comes with enough washers to put on the boat side. So I found some washers to put on the nut side. So I believe it needs washers on both sides. So far, so good. Now these kicker bars do come with shims that attach to the firewall, just in case your car is not exactly square. I mean, it's a unibody car, I'm sure it's not. Okay, as far as the shims go, it comes with four of these thin ones and two thick ones. I actually kept the shims off of my, my original front clip when I took it off. And I just tried to match them up to the thickness as best I could. The only thing that sucked was I really needed two big ones or two thicker ones for this side and one thin one and a thick one and a thin one for that side over there if I matched them up exactly with what come off. But I ended up just putting a thick one and a thin one on each side, bolted it up, 
I'll know more once I get the motor in it and get the fenders on and we go to set the fender gap. It says that you shim it out to help set the fender gap. So I'm gonna leave it with what it's got right now. And then when I go to put the fenders on, we'll see where we're at. So far it's been a complete bolt on. I haven't had to cut or weld or redrill any holes. So I give it a thumbs up for that. I painted it white just because the car's white for now. I don't intend to leave this car white, but I'm just gonna paint all this white just to see what it looks like. Plus it'll show uh, every greasy handprint that you got all over it. Next thing we're gonna do is take a dead blow and knock these bushings into the leaf springs. Then you want to put these bushings in your frame. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Then we're gonna take one of these and put in there, and then you'll take one and put in one end of your uh, leaf spring. I'm gonna put a little butthole grease on here to make it uh, slide in easier. Yeah, there should be two half inch by three and a half inch long bolts that'll go through these spring hangers and it says in the instructions that the uh, alignment pin on the leaf spring centered so it doesn't matter which way you flip these springs this should work both ways Figured I would do this side first because it's going to be easier because the other side gets a shackle and you should be able to move the shackle whichever way you need to to make the spring line up. I don't know what the correct uh, torque spec is on these. I usually just, it's got an eye lock nut on it. I usually just tighten it up until it's, it's snug. There's no reason to crank down on these things. Get the there, you just get your shackles, slide them on. And the nut goes on each side of those. And you just tighten them up snug. Next we're going to put these uh, spring perches on. Now I didn't paint these yet because I'm going to take them, have to take them off and weld them on later. Let's 
got a couple of U-boats that hold them on. Speedway recommends you get this thing sitting at ride height and then you set your kingpins back at five to six degrees tilted back. Well, I don't know what my ride height is or gonna be because I don't have the rear suspension the way I want it. I'm sure the rear's gonna go up, the front's gonna go down. So what I'm gonna do, just slide this thing under there, get it centered up on the perches. And I'm just gonna put a couple of tacks on each side of the perch and I'm just gonna go with it. For now, I'm not gonna weld it up. Then once I get my rear suspension done, get the motor and transmission setting in it, and get it to where it's actually setting at ride height or close to it, I'll check and see where I'm at with that. And then if I need to grind my tacks off and, and spin it to wherever it needs to be, I'll just do it then. So I got my jack stands under there. I measured and marked the center of the axle tube. And I'm going to lower this lift down to where it just touches the axle. I'm going to take my tape measure and center it up. Then I'll probably put a little bit more of the weight on it. And I'll, I'll tilt that uh, 5 degrees on that caster. Okay, I got that set at 5.4. Because it says anywhere between 5 and 6. So I just kind of try to shoot for the middle. Once you get the weight set on these and get these, the leaf springs will try to spread out on you. So once I got the weight, got them sitting on there, I had to just, I just went back and forth measuring from the edge of that to the edge of this until they were the same. There's, they were centered. I measured the frame rails and made sure that the leaf springs were centered with the frame rails and measured from the middle to here on both sides. Just made sure all my measurements lined out. So now all I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna take my welder and I'm gonna throw a tack right there on each side of it. And that should hold it in place until we get everything else done to it. And then we'll come back and we'll set this, make sure it's set good. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install the steering box. Should be three bolts, three spacers. And I'm gonna use a little devil's glue on it because there's nothing funny about a loose steering box. Okay, onto the spindle. Man, the directions that come with it are pretty iffy. What I think happens is you put this thrust bearing on the bottom. You put it on. You put your kingpin through there. And then it says you can't have a gap greater than 0 .006 in here. So I'll had to run and buy me a filler gauge because I didn't have one. And I shimmed it. I put one shim in. I could still put it in there. So I put the .007 filler gauge on there. I could still get it in there. So I went ahead and put two shims in there. I can't even get the 06 in there. So at that point I know I should be good. I took the kingpin and the the higher notch, whichever way you turn it, is going to be the one that lines up with your set screw on your axle. So I marked it with a sharpie so I could turn it towards my set screw. Hopefully, this works. And I did learn if you put this in here, all right, I didn't learn, I figured out. If you put this in here and you need to take it out, because I put the bottom dust cap on, just get you a magnet and you can pull it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together. Hopefully it works. 
The set screws are five thirty seconds. And I made sure my lines, my little marks lined up. And I tightened it up. Now that we got the spindle on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, brake caliper brackets and the steering arm on. Now for this, you're gonna put it on the front side of this. And you're gonna use an inch and a half bolt on the top. The weldlets go on the back of it. Use an inch and three quarter on the bottom. Then you'll take another inch and a half and put it on that side. Then your steering arm goes on like that. So this kit comes with another plate that you can bolt onto the front of this that's the steering stop or you can use the brake caliper as a steering stop the only issue i have with that is the brake caliper they sent me and the steering stop the brake caliper is not threaded for it so i'm gonna have to go buy a 3 8 by 24 tap so i can tap that because i don't see any reason in using the stop on the front if I don't have to. If I've already got this on there, why not put another plate on there? Now that I got that all bolted up, all we like is putting the hub on. Now if you get the brake kit, it'll come with the rotor and the bearings and the seals and everything you need to, to put on the axle. Don't forget your front bearing there. Okay, ran into a problem here. This castle nut, if I put the pin in it, as you can see the pin is outside the castle nut, so the castle nut is useless at that point. Okay, I think I found a solution to my problem. I found this washer here. So I put, which this one's already on there, put that on there, then put that on top of it, and then put my castle nut, and it'll space me out enough to, my cotter pin will go through the hole there in my castle nut.
Next thing I'm gonna hook up is my steering. I'm gonna skip my brakes right now because if I put my brake calipers on, I can't put my wheels that I have, which are 14s on there. And I just wanna put some wheels on it to set on the ground and look at it, really. So I installed this steering arm. And what I did was took a Sharpie and marked the top of the spline. And I moved this thing back and forth. And I counted the rotations until I found center. Okay, the drag links. Drag links will come pre-painted, which is awesome. They're threaded on the ends, and you'll have a right and a left hind joint. The threads are right and left. The lefts will have this little notch on the nuts. That's how you can tell the left from the, from the right hand thread. Uh, you'll just have to kind of look in there and see what the thread is. I believe it's the right. And you just thread a, a hind joint on each end of it. There they are installed. On the steering link, you'll have the thick washers on each side. And this bolt is not long enough. It's just now made it to the nylock and it's made all the way up. And then on the other one, it comes with these little cone washers that you'll put on the bottom here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Then we'll set our toe in by adjusting this. Okay, got my links tightened up, spun the steering box, counted the turns, centered it up, centered that up, adjusted that. You have to set your stops so this arm will stop before it hits the spring. And then I set my toe in an eighth inch and all I did was clamp a level to each rotor and I just measured the front and the back and I just adjusted this this link until I was eighth inch shorter on the front than I was the back. All right, I thought I'd test it my brakes before I put my wheels on just to see if they actually worked out. And what I ran into was a little spot that kicks, uh, sticks out on the caliper, hits the bracket and it does that on both sides. Okay, this is the ear that's in the way. I just took on the other caliper and just took a grinder and ground that down I'll show you you can see where I ground that down and it fits on there now it fits good it all works out all right I left the brake calipers off so I can fit these little wheels they still don't fit they're hitting right there I just snug those lug nuts up because I want to set it down on the ground and see what it looks like I haven't installed the shocks yet I read online that the shocks that come with it don't work, but we'll find out when I go to put them on. All right, let's let this thing down and see what it looks like. Well, there it is sitting on the ground. I've read online a lot about this kit before I purchased it. So I know there's a few things that's gonna have to change. Lots of guys say that those leaf springs don't work. You end up having to get some, a different set of leaf springs and the shocks don't work. Other than that, it bolted on just fine. The brake calipers were kind of a pain in the butt because I had to grind that piece off. The castle nut not lining up with the cotter pin hole. And the only other thing is that bolt's not long enough on the steering arm, but man, that's an easy fix. The brake caliber's an easy fix. Like I said, we'll get the motor and stuff sitting in it and we'll see how the leaf springs do. They're already tilted back a little bit and it didn't have any weight at all on it. And man, it is, it is stiff as a board. You can jump on it and the tires bounce off the ground. It don't even move the springs. I think I'm gonna end this video here. Next week, I'm going to try to get that core support off of that. Maybe do something with the firewall, clean it up a little bit, and try to put the sheet metal back on it. Man, I want to see what it looks like with the, the fenders and everything on it. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. And if you see anything that I've done wrong, please leave a comment and let me know. And if you want to see what this thing looks like when it's finished, 
just keep watching i'm gonna try to get this thing finished this year and always thanks for watching